I read chapter 3 of the Freakonomics book, which poses the question, why do drug dealers still live with their moms? This chapter seeks to knock conventional wisdom, which, according to the author, isn't actually wisdom because it is wrong most of the time. The main character, so to speak, of this chapter is Sudhir Venkatesh, a college student at the University of California. Sudhir began visiting the projects of Chicago to survey those living there. He eventually got tied up with a gang called the Black Disciples and decided to stay with them in order to learn more about the drug dealing life and the whole franchise behind it. Sudhir became acquainted with the leader of the Black Disciples, a man by the name of JT. Sudhir continued to observe the daily happenings of this gang and also learn more about the drug dealing world as a whole. He eventually got his hands on an expense book of the gang and was able to draw comparisons between the Black Disciples and franchises such as McDonald's. Sudhir eventually wrote a paper about his experiences and JT ended up getting thrown in jail. The point made by this chapter that I found to me most compelling was the statistic that JT and other people at the top of the drug world made as much as $66 an hour while the other 97% or so involved work for as much as $3.30 an hour. So most people getting involved in dealing drugs are risking their whole lives just to make below minimum wage. That is a scary and troubling thought. I was also shocked to learn that the leaders of operations could be paying the foot soldiers more money, but they chose not to because they want to uphold their image of having power and being the one in charge. Overall, I was astonished by this chapter because of its ability to shed light on something that most people aren't too educated about. While it may seem to be conventional wisdom that drug dealers are super rich, the reality of things is quite the opposite. Simply put, many drug dealers are still living with their moms because they don't make enough money to live in their own house. The way the authors of Freakonomics studied economics did change my perception of economics because it made me realize that economics removes morality and leaves no space to be sensitive. First off, I learned that something as bad and wrong as drug dealing can be compared to other American franchises such as McDonald's. Just like McDonald's, the main goal of the Black Disciples is to maximize their profits. They have expenses to pay as well as taxes. The success of their business, just like the success of McDonald's, is dependent upon what's happening outside in the world. For example, a war between rivaling drug dealing factions can be bad for business and those at the top, but it can be beneficial to the foot soldiers because they can make more money out of a war. The second example that changed my perception of economics was the fact that there is a hierarchy and order within the black disciples, just the same as with many other businesses. They had the board of directors, the individual branch leaders, the foot soldiers, and then those not on payroll but looking to make their way up to the top of the pyramid of success. Those at the bottom are striving to make their way to the top, while those at the top are doing everything they can to stay where they are and not get thrown in jail. However, those at the top run a greater risk of getting busted by the feds. It's amazing to me that the basic principles of economics apply in many different and vastly opposite settings.